Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up as we once again look at 10 games coming out on the Nintendo Switch in this upcoming week. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. As always we have a mixture of genres, art styles, indie games and some better known ones. But is this week a wallet buster? Well, let's find out. The first game we're going to look at for the week then coming out on the 20th is a game called One Dog Story. This is a platform game with RPG elements and uses a pixel art style. I will say the pixel art is very refined, clearly going for a higher end look, not the 8-bit retro style that you see a lot of the time. And judging by the trailer I've just watched, the gameplay looks pretty tight as well. The blurb mentions that there will be boss battles as well as puzzle solving involved, as well as some decisions to make and a variety of endings to find. This game has been out on Steam for a couple of years now and will be selling for £11.69 or your regional equivalent. Next up, releasing on the 21st and selling for £24.99, you have Rock of Ages 3 Make and Break. Now, Rock of Ages 2 is already available on the Switch and is a fair bit cheaper than this one, actually. It's about half the price, and I'm not sure exactly what this new one brings. I'm assuming it's the level editor, which it mentions, and is the reason for the name Make and Break. You can make your own levels and then obviously break them down. You can share your creations online and obviously download other people's levels as well. In terms of the gameplay, Rock of Ages is a tower defense game of sorts where you have to send huge boulders going towards your enemy to try and break down parts of their castle or of their defense. The humor is quite absurd, it's really quite funny. You have a variety of different historical characters that are involved and they're kind of having a spat with each other and then solve it by throwing these boulders at one another. Very much reminds me of Monty Python, just the way that the humor is handled. I also think this one is getting a physical release. I'm sure I saw it advertised on a few websites, which is something the second game didn't get. And I suppose it will just boil down to whether it's worth that much more than that second game. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is essentially an online learning community which offers thousands of inspiring classes for those looking to branch out and enhance their skills. The topics include graphic design, creative writing, animation, film and video, which I'm sure would appeal to a lot of people here on YouTube. Now I'm a huge fan of classic traditional hand-drawn animation. Movies like Disney's Snow White and Cinderella still look great to this day and I love watching them with my daughter and kind of lament the movement away from it over the years. Partaking in former Disney animator Tom Bancroft's class on hand-drawn animation, looking at topics such as flipping, rolling and charting was such an insight into a classic art and I loved peering behind the curtain to see how it was all done. You can get all of this for less than $10 a month via an annual subscription, but also Skillshare have provided us with a link which will be in the description to this video entitling the first 1,000 people to use it to a two-month free trial. It is definitely worth having a look at. Okay, now back to the list. Also on the 21st, we have a game called Panzer Paladin, which again is a platformer with a pixel art style, although this one very much goes for a retro look. But again, I will say I do like the look of it. It uses some very strong colors in its palette, a lot of purples and greens that work very well together. And is another game that has clearly been inspired by 8-bit but uses today's technology to beef it up a bit. In terms of the gameplay then, it says that you use power armor and melee weapons to make your way across each of the levels. It also looks to have certain sections where you leave the power armor behind and play as the character who is called Flame. Again, it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty decent, but it is £16, which on the face of it at least does look pretty expensive. I suppose it depends how long the game is and how well executed it is as well. On the 22nd you have a game called Aircraft Evolution that I'll be honest has my interest merely by the fact that it's a 2D side-scrolling flying game. Anything that looks remotely like Choplifter from back in the day, albeit this one's aeroplanes, not helicopters, gets at least a second glance from me. This one's been out on Steam for a couple of years and for what it's worth actually has decent scores on there. And having watched the trailer, I'm feeling fairly positive so far. It says that you can fly through four different time periods, going from World War I up to futuristic battles, and you can level up and evolve your aircraft. There are 40 different missions with a variety of different objectives needing to be met. It sells for £8.99 but does have a 20% pre-order discount 
and this might end up being one of those little sleeper hits, we'll have to wait and see. Next, then, we have a game called Cyber Complex, which will cost £12.59. Now, this one calls itself a unique mix of action, strategy and arcade elements with a 1960s-style sci-fi setting. It goes on to say that you can log yourself into the cyberspace grid and learn how to capture clusters, produce helping nodes and avoid enemy scanners. There is a campaign mode as well as two-player local co-op or versus modes, as well as the ability to create your own levels and upload your highest scores to online leaderboards. With all that said though, there isn't a trailer on the eShop and the screenshots don't give you any sort of idea at all as to what sort of game it is. Now I did go online and find a trailer and it appears to be a puzzle game of sorts based perhaps, I suppose you could say, around Pac-Man with you having to make your way around a grid and not get caught by certain enemies all the while collecting things. While they couldn't have put a trailer on the eShop just to give you some sort of idea as to what you were in for, I don't know. I honestly couldn't see anyone spending £12.59 on a game like this when the screenshots are just so vague. It's a very strange choice. Well, hopefully you're seeing what I couldn't see as of this moment, so you can make your own mind up as to whether it's something that interests you. And then the big one for the week, we have Crisis Remastered. Now the Switch is a tidy bit of kit, but can it run Crisis? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Crisis is a first person shooter that came out in 2007 on Windows and 2011, I believe it was, on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. The plot of Crisis sees you starting out with a rescue mission, which soon becomes much more as alien invaders swarm over a North Korean island chain. You have a special nano suit which grants you a host of different abilities and you must use these abilities to make your way through the game as you see fit, for example going stealthily or full on aggressive. This remastered version is being co-developed by Crytek and Sabre Interactive and sells for £26.99. Now whatever you make of that price, I don't know what the general consensus will be, it's a bloody lot cheaper than some of the games we've seen come out recently on the Switch, such as Burnout, so fair play to them for pricing what is a remaster of a 13 year old game appropriately. Another thing I've noticed, having just watched the trailer, is it makes a point of saying on the trailer, you'll see it on the screen now, footage is taken directly from the Switch version, which you could argue damn right it should be, but there are many trailers that don't do this. We've seen it plenty of times in the past, so again, props to them for that. Four days ago, NASA picked up a high-frequency signal emanating from the center of the mound. No man, we're losing your video feed. It looks like an invasion force. And next, quite possibly my pick of the week, this is Carrion by Devolver Digital. And this company just do not seem to know how to publish bad games. This costs £17.99 and calls itself a reverse horror game where you actually assume the role of the monster trying to escape from a research facility. It uses a pixel art style, but this is top tier pixel art. It looks absolutely lovely. It has that sort of rotoscoping quality to it in terms of the character movement and the backgrounds just look great. A beautiful use of colour and the movement of the creature, if you've seen it on the trailer now, looks fantastic. The way it tries to hide and its tentacles move to grab people. This is the sort of game I'd play imagining that the creature I'm playing as was The Thing from John Carpenter's movie, one of my favourite movies of all time, even if that's got bugger all to do with what the story is actually about. It costs £17.99 and like I said, I cannot wait for this one. Coming out on the 24th, we have Dex from Cubic Games, which costs £17.99 but does have 25% off that price up until the 30th of August if you own one of their previous games and the list is on that eShop page. This is a 2D action RPG with non-linear gameplay and again, music to my ears, a cyberpunk setting. You play as Dex, who is being hunted by a powerful and enigmatic organisation because they want to use her unique abilities. It says the game is designed as a tribute to some of the best neo-noir and cyberpunk worlds ever explored in storytelling and has a murky atmosphere with distinct characters. There are multiple dialogue choices to make with branching outcomes. You can use a variety of play styles such as being stealthy, using combat, being diplomatic or trying to hack your way through and you can also choose the cybernetic implant skills that your character has. Pity you had to get involved in this kid. 
I wish there had been another way. But please trust me when I say, this is worth it. Let's see what's in your pockets, girl. Next up is Rainswept, which costs £8.99 but has 10% off until the 31st of July. And this is an adventure game where you play as a detective trying to solve the case of a homicide in a small town. What sounds quite interesting about this one is just as much as you try to solve the case, it sounds as if you need to deal with the emotions surrounding the case in terms of the locals of this small town, the way that it's affected everybody else. It appears to be a point and click game, but perhaps one where the story takes precedence over the gameplay itself. And finally for the week, also coming out on the 24th, we have Mittelborg City of Ages, a game that has been out on Steam for a little while and is a strategy game with resource management, but also rogue-like elements. I'm not sure how that would work. Anyway, it costs £9.99. You are the chancellor of the city and you must make decisions to try and keep the city running, both in terms of things like the financial side. How will you spend the money? Will you upgrade the city and repair what's needed or spend it on an army? But also, will you rule with an iron fist and execute those that it's deemed deserve it? Or will you pardon them? All of these decisions will have a bearing on how your reign goes. I don't know what the rogue-like elements would be, and that would be the part, for me at least, that would worry me. I don't think I'd like my rogue-like elements to be in a strategy resource management game where you invest hours and then have to start again. It depends how that part plays out as to whether I'd be interested in this one, I think. So there we have it, another 10 games for this week. Is it a wallet buster? Well, as usual, it depends on your take. Crisis, I'm sure lots of people will be interested in that. Carrion looks absolutely fantastic for me. I can't wait to try that one out. And there were a couple of others there that have at least piqued my interest. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please do check out the link that's both in the description and in that top pinned comment to get yourselves a two month free trial of their service. The first 1000 people to click will get that. So you may want to be quick if you don't want to miss out. Thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.